Welcome to Come to Your Senses, the School of Sensual Living podcast. I'm your host, Mary Lofgren. Here, we explore how to live bravely and beautifully through pleasure, mindfulness, embodiment, femininity, beauty, art, and of course, everyday sensuality. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. It's Mary, thrilled to be here on the Velvet Fainting Couch, talking with you today and introducing one of my dear friends and great inspirations, Kim Sims. Kim is a passionate yogi, a woman who revolutionizes mothering, a style icon, a radiant beautiful soul and most especially for today's interview is the founder of a style of yoga where she brings sacredness to nakedness and after listening to this interview through what comes to mind is the experience that you might get when you walk into a sacred church or temple or site or clearing in the woods any place that evokes that sensation of the sacred. And what Kim teaches through her embodiment is the presence of that sacredness in the human body and visible whenever we look in the mirror. In this interview, you'll hear about how to stay grounded in times of chaos. You'll hear about how to not just be vulnerable, but to actually be invulnerable by stripping away and getting spiritually naked with yourself. You'll hear about how to dismantle the illusion of separateness. You'll hear about how to savor the sweetness of a sensual life, even in times of bone deep grief. And so without further ado, now that your appetite has been properly whetted, I am so thrilled and grateful to introduce you to my friend and my great inspiration, Kim, the Naked Yoga Goddess. Okay, hello, Kim. Mm -hmm. Hello, my beautiful, beautiful friend. How are you? (laughs) I'm so great, so grateful to be on the, um, it's not really the phone, but on this invisible tin can with a wire connecting it, we call the internet with you. (laughs) And so Kim and I have been friends for several years, and I've watched Kim go through many different evolutions. And I wanted to share something, Kim, from your website um, that I find so moving about your current evolution. And it's from uh, the naked yoga goddess.com. And it says the body is divine by design. Female bodied people are portals that every human being must pass through before beginning their physical journey on earth. Therefore, she is a glimpse of divinity in the flesh. Bringing sacredness to nakedness is a container where students can feel safe to shed layers of everything that does not serve them, where a balance between external and internal energies occur, and a celebration of curves and different body types happen. Oh, God. Well, I mean, I feel like the riddle just got a lot more spacious, you know? I mean, that is just so beautiful. Uh, I love you. You're like giving me my words back to me. Yeah. Yes. And they, yeah, they, they sound like <laughs> I know. And what I love about oh, your work and just the presence that you bring to not just the the work offering that you bring into the world, bringing sacredness to nakedness and, na- and naked yoga goddess, but the level of presence and spiritual nudity that you bring to everything that you do, yourself as a parent, yourself as a friend, yourself as someone who 
identifies as a sensual being yourself as a yogi. And so I'd love to just start, I was saying to Kim at the start of our um, call that I like to, to, to not do the, like the catch up part so that our, our conversation can be rich and kind of teeming with this anticipation. But I wanted to just start by asking you, how is your body today and how, how are you feeling today and how do you feel in your body in this moment? Ah, take a deep inhale and exhale breath. Because that is, um, that's the question, right? That's the question that we get to have the privilege um, and honor to be able uh, to ask ourselves if we have the privilege and honor to do that, we should do so. And so I, um, my response is that I feel really good. I feel good. I feel well. Um, I feel healthy. I feel prosperous in my body. Um, I feel very strong after <laughs> a month of uh, yoga teacher training, rocket yoga teacher training, inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement and wanting to incorporate um, and include inclusivity, including people of color, um, indigenous people, people who don't always, uh, when you Google a yoga post, don't always pop up. <laughs> but we're here doing yoga and feeling really good in our body. One of the beauties about this training is that I have been given an opportunity to reset in this day and age 2020 of resetting but to even reset my yoga practice and the way I teach in the modern world in the 21st 21st century like I was just marveling at yet another new platform that I've been introduced through you and I'm just like wow we're really in the presence and of a changed, evolved society. And with this feeling in my body comes also peace in my mind and a strong, deep ability to breathe in every single moment and exhale and release anything that doesn't serve me. And that's why I started with a big inhale and exhale breath. Oh, beautiful. And it, it, I feel myself and I imagine those who are listening to this breathing deeper as you say that. And I think that just speaks to what I love so much about your work and your leadership is inclusivity as in there is room for all of me in the practice of something like yoga. You know, there's room for all of us. And and when I say me, I mean like the parts of myself that I might want to disown or the parts of myself that I feel like are imperfect or are still being worked on. And so I'm going to hold out on that part and just show you the parts of myself that I can control, you know, and just making room for everyone in this mm -hmm. sacred practice um, that you have really niched into, which is bringing sacredness to nakedness. Yeah, I mean, and um, I, I was really um, affected by COVID because who wants to be naked with a pandemic going on? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Do that. Like, yes, six feet distance, wear your mask, but get butt ass naked. <laughs> so um, it wasn't translating how I wanted initially. And um, and also uh, the container is safe. Like I have such a, um, a, a pride in creating this container where I provide safety, love, and freedom to be expressed and it's real time in the circle and cipher of um, sisterhood and 
then, you know, so doing that online in your own living room, it, it's not exactly the same. There's some incidents with, you know, the, the quality of safety with the Zoom rooms mm-hmm. and some of those platforms. So I couldn't 100% say I, I, this, this container is safe. Mm-hmm. And um, however, as the universe does, it provides a infinite amount of possibilities. And this is truly uh, my mission in life is to change the way people feel about their naked bodies. And it is my mission because of the divinity that I felt. Uh, so it's an alchemist. It's just truly an alchemist process. But I know as one person experiencing this, others also um, this rippling, like you learn in, in yoga, this rippling will express out to others and they will feel the, the effect. Yes. And, and I know that your journey with yoga has really been one of healing, which is something that is really happening on the planet right now, as we all do a lot of what you call on your website, shadow mirror work. Like we're being pressed into an experience of really being unable to escape our shadow in many ways. And one of the things that you talk about on your website is that bringing sacredness to nakedness is naked yoga healing. This is a transformational intuitive coaching tool I used after the sudden loss of my mother in 2014. Shadow mirror work, shedding everything that did not serve me and letting go of old shame and fear became the way I overcame pain, grief, anxiety, and depression after my mother's transition. And I wondered if you would just tell us a little bit, because at this part in the recording, we had a little audio kerfluffle. So you'll notice a slight change in the audio here forward. I know that I didn't grow up thinking, oh, I want to be a feminine sensuality teacher when I grow up. And I imagine, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I imagine that you you didn't grow up thinking, I want to bring sacredness to nakedness when I grow up. <laughs> um, but I, I would love to just hear a little bit about what that means to you. Oh, thank you. Um... I love the imagery because it feels in align with that sacred idea of living your life naturally, living who and what you are, perfect, whole, and complete every single day, naked and invulnerable, not just vulnerable, because we often know what it means to be naked and vulnerable and you know, showing that side of ourselves that we feel it's weak, but we can also be naked and invulnerable. There's a balance, but no, I absolutely didn't uh, grow up believing that uh, I should change the way the world (laughs) thinks about their naked bodies, not at all. (laughs) And um, in fact, I, I grew up very Southern, in the church, kind of sheltered. My dad was in the military, and so we moved a lot. And tradition was what I followed. I went to church as a kid and even through college. And then I met a boy, I fell in love, and then, you know, married, had kids. All the traditions. It was a turning point because at what point do you do something that really makes so many others uncomfortable, but makes you very comfortable? And that was that, that shadow mirror work that at the time, I didn't even know that's what I was doing, but it felt intuitively right. I remember saying this affirmation, even when I had my children and I was sometimes at this complete total loss being five and under, three children, my house was crazy town. And there would be times where I I didn't know what the hell to do. And so when my mother passed away and it was absolutely a devastating moment for me, 
I went through this depression and I didn't even know it was depression. It was um, this hopelessness and helplessness. And oftentimes when you're in depression, you don't know until you look back and in that seat of hindsight, but in the shadow and chaos and crisis, there's pleasure, there's peace, there is invulnerability. And when I looked at myself in the mirror and I felt very lost, okay, I don't know where I'm at, who I am, but I know in this moment what I'm not. And what I'm not is, you know, this jewelry. I, I'm not mm. this hair. I'm not my shoes and my clothes. And then it just kept kept going and going until I'm standing there naked in the mirror and it's just me and me, <laughs> you know, it's me and me and looking into my eyes, looking to the windows of heaven, realizing that in this place of grief, like deep grief, where I didn't want to come out of my attic except to feed my kids, forget about feeding myself, just feed my kids. But when I looked into that mirror, it was this gateway, it was this moment where I could see inside of myself. And in that place within is where I began to start growing. In the seed of who I am, I've always been this person, this woman, this goddess, this all that I am in this moment here right now. And the seed of an oak tree, the oak tree exists. The mighty oak is within that small seed. I started to pull what I knew that made me feel good in, in the times where I felt, you know, crazy as a mom. And that was my yoga. So butt ass naked. <laughs> I moved from the mirror to my yoga mat and just started to, to just move. And of course, that's what I did. I called it yoga because that's what I've been trained to do for, you know, so many years. But in actuality, I was really becoming one, one with my movement, how I was spatially in this world, how I expressed myself. And then it became not an either or situation, it became a both and. It was no longer where either... I can be naked in my attic. I have to have clothes on and put like I wanted to be both and I posted one time that it was a April Fool's joke about having a naked yoga class. And all of these women, <laughs> you know, it's an April Fool's joke. At the time I was trying to teach yoga, I wasn't getting any response. And I so jokingly, ha ha ha, the joke's on me posted this on Facebook and got all of this response. That's when I recognized, wait a minute, there's something to this. There's something that humans want to experience the both and in a balance in their naked bodies that they're not getting every day. For me, it was the three specific components of safety, love, and freedom self-care, self-intimacy, really getting into face-to-face -face with what your fears are and recognizing that those fears are just a call for love. And then the self-love where you also recognize your sensuality, where you also recognize that the root chakra starts that activate in that activating area for a purpose don't just gloss over it to the solar plexus let's start let's start at the root let's start at the sacral and get in touch with our sexuality and sensuality as human beings and be able to access that orgasmic energy to unfold on anything that we choose to allow that energy to be on. And so that's the whole part of mind, body, breath connecting as a human being, being naked and invulnerable, whole, perfect, and complete. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it really is. I, I'm taking notes and I'm like, we need to break. <laughs> 
because there's so much there. There's so much. It's like pomegranate. Just everything is just a little seed. So like, I want to just reflect back what I'm hearing because it's really powerful. Is that in many spiritual traditions there is wisdom around the fact that our suffering doesn't come from the thing that's causing us pain it comes from our resistance and fighting against that which is causing us pain and that in those moments in your attic when you were meeting your own gaze and i just love what you said i'm gonna have to go back and listen to the exact quote that you shared but like in those moments where i didn't know what i was or who i was well where i could begin was with what i'm not and I'm not these earrings, and I'm not this lingerie, and I'm not this, this clothing. Wow, that is so powerful. Because so many times in that experience of being lost in grief or lost in heartache or just lost in the fury of life, how do we locate ourselves? And that the origin point is to look in that mirror and say, what am I not? And strip that away. That is so powerful. Yes. And for me, how I've been looking at this whole time in 2020 as that everyone, like it's happening for the whole world, it feels like, you know, and I'm coming from that perspective of knowing that all the shit that we're shedding that does not serve us is truly for our highest existence of life. And so as I I see the things just falling and falling like clothes that I shed and and I know, I have this knowing of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. What I love about that is like, I, I once read a quote about feminism, that it's like this radical notion that women are human beings. And the speaker was talking about how when it comes to racism, it's the same thing. It's like, removing that illusion of separateness and the way in which racism and white supremacy robs us of our humanity, regardless of our racial identity. It robs us of our empathy and our relatedness to one another. And what I'm hearing is that in your practice, this both and, this wholeness that comes from you being able to be you and be fully human and fully complete naked in the mirror is also a metaphor for how you are able to show up fully human and fully complete in your life, which then has a ripple effect out onto the world. Yes, exactly. Oh my God. (laughs) Perfectly said. (laughs) yes you are my tribe (laughs) (laughs) well I mean you have an Instagram account called naked yoga goddess and what really like I, I was actually just crying on the phone this morning with a friend about how exhausted I feel from these transactional ways of relating that are put upon us during this time when we can't be together in person And how my phone is always pinging with people trying to get in touch with me. And I'm trying to comment on people's social media. And I'm just like efforting so hard to keep in touch with people when really what's happening is I'm just pushing a lot of buttons and it feels so empty. What I love about your Instagram account and the work that you share in the world, really the art that you share in the world, is this level of resonance. And when you share a photograph of yourself naked and a caption, or just you share any kind of photograph, but, you know, especially the ones where you have that invulnerability to share all of who you are bravely with the world, it's like there is this ping, this resonance of wholeness that in the, how should we call it? The maelstrom of the internet is so rare. I love that that's the way you reframe it because that's exactly where I'm coming from is just to really bring about a messaging. I look at specifically 2020, everything for me is showing up like this mirror. When I see 2020, you look at that, the duality of that number. 
we are in this time where we are getting a chance to be face to face mirror all of the things that we feel separate from mm -hmm. and in that separation i feel as if it's almost convicting us every single day to ask the hard questions like why why do i feel separate from this person why should i have a, a trigger or an issue by that love or by that expression. And when we start to ask those questions, it's really because we're asking those same questions within ourselves. Why must I be separate from, you know, my kink? Why must I be separate from wanting to hang out with my kids and also wanting to enjoy a cocktail from time to time? Why do, must I be separate from reading text from brilliant authors because I also have these spiritual beliefs. Why must I separate that which is within myself that truly is an expression of God, universe, creator? And in seeing that within ourselves, we are now again rippling that same thing throughout the universe as we look at our fellow human beings and we look at you know, the parents whose children are locked in cages and say, well, what if that was my kid? Mm -hmm. And not, not only what if it's my kid, now we're looking at children being killed by the police and saying, but wait a minute, that could be my kid. Or people who are being vilified for living in a certain place and saying, that could be my homeland. There's this unfolding of the duality and the separation becoming actually a place of unification and unity. And I really do believe that that is the evolution. I mean, I could be like John Le Lennon with imagine this, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's my thing song of, of, of late because I do believe that there is this evolution that we're in the midst of that 20, 30 years away, this world will be completely different as we know it. I think there's opportunity and, you know, crisis and chaos. If we can look at it from a place of unification and how can I be of better service to this world that we are creating? Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to break that down too. I've got <laughs> I just hear so much wholeness and so much of this idea of a realistic vision of equity amongst human beings, you know, like not this utopian kind of idealistic idea that often gets dismissed. But when you talked about why does my kink have to be separate from my mothering? Why does my love of romance novels or I can't I, I think you said like like other authors have to be separate from my love of spiritual texts you know like these dualities that staying married to those dualities and it, it also traces back to how you started with your story of just like following the path of tradition you know mm -hmm. and following this path of this will get me to safety and instead carving this new path that's been germinated from that seed that you encountered in the mirror where this separateness within myself causes separateness in the world. Like that's what I really hear is that separating and compartmentalizing these parts of self. I recently heard a, on a webinar with Andrea Renee, she was talking about how culture is often referred to as like the culture or the system. It's like this thing outside of us. And she said, you know, culture is not something outside of us. That it's a, it's a series of collective decisions that are made over and over within us. And if you want to change the culture, you have to make different decisions. And that your decision to no longer have these parts of yourself separated by walls, but instead by permeable boundaries is creating more of the vision of 
the kind of humanity that you want to see in the world. Exactly. Yes. So this is the part where I have to remind myself to talk about sensuality. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, to, to just kind of speak to what we were just talking about, similarly, in the way that I view sensuality, sensuality is not something that I experience when I'm wearing French lingerie and you know, having an intimate encounter. It's something I experience from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to bed. It is how I live my life. You know, it's not something that I compartmentalize. And that's what sensual living really is to me, is feeling completely safe and present in your own body so that you can show up fully present in your life. Yeah. And I love, and, and yet in your, so, and, and I have all these thoughts coming out at once. Let me pause. <laughs> and in your work, your work has such a sensual resonance. And yet it is this really integrated thing where you're not teaching or advocating sensuality necessarily. It's just something that you are. And so I wonder if you could share a little bit a little bit about your relationship to sensuality and how that's changed for you over time and, and specifically how you're relating to sensuality in this time. Mm. Well, I, I think that um, you hit it right on the head as far as like the embodiment of sensuality. And I tend to lean always towards pleasure and things that feel good in yoga i always teach in my classes that in the west we love to feel it you know i taught beat from yoga for many years and it was like they wanted to die they wanted you to kill them. <laughs> and you know if they could go out there uh, leave class shivering and shaking, you know, like trembling, they felt like, yes. But there is, that is not the only part of yoga, the yoga experience. There's a sweetness, the sukra also, where when you get into the hard pose, take the breath to experience the sweetness. And that's what I believe sensuality is. It is the moment to slow down and experience the sweetness of life and journey. So yeah, it is a total sensory meditation where if I'm eating and I know that I want to feel completely alive and in the moment and what I'm eating, I take it complete advantage of experiencing this food with every sense available. And so that means a tasting, touching it, and feeling the texture, whether it's my hands or fingers or mouth, thinking about how it feels on my tongue and how it smells. Like I, I've experienced this just really orgasmic energy just by a sense of smell like the ocean or you know my lover's cologne and just experiencing that again so taking in that food that fragrance fully looking at it closing your eyes seeing the image opening it up seeing it again in a different way the different colors listening to the joy of of ingesting it you know, taking that moment where you can totally and completely experience whatever it is whether it's a sunset it's your kid playing and if you cannot do that reevaluate that experience because we do have the freedom to choose something else and choose another way to live and then what that looks like i mean it's more of what it feels like than what it looks like. Mm -hmm. If you are thinking of what you're looking like, looking like when you are experiencing sensuality, I invite you to try it when you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it looks like. 
and just feel like close your eyes and just really deeply feel. And even in moments of grief, I can tap into my sensuality. That's a game changer for me. This can be something that I can experience in either a lesson or a blessing, but I can experience it. Mm -hmm. You know, something that you said at the, at the start that really moved me was the part about how you would teach these yoga classes and people would come in wanting to just be you know kind of beaten up by the practice and leave shivering and it occurs to me that in a culture again with the understanding that culture is just a series of collective decisions in a culture that numbs and desensitizes us from from that sweetness and that ability to feel that sometimes that intensity and that edge between suffering and pleasure is the only time that we really know that we're feeling anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that this practice of attuning to the subtlety, and did you call it sukha is the sweetness? Sukra, yes. Sukra. Attuning to that, that sukha and that sweetness, even in a moment of something that seems so intolerable, like grief. You know, it's like in a yoga, yoga class when you're in a difficult pose and the instruction is not go harder. The instruction is bring in the breath and soften that in these moments where life is testing us and our impulses to go harder, to settle into that sweetness that exists even in grief. It's just profound. Yes. When I think about that, that's my feminine energy. That's my languaging around that I am very much tapped into both masculine and feminine energy. I have the fortune to be a Pisces and uh, with a double Leo. So I kind of really play. That's great style. <laughs> <laughs> I really play with masculine and feminine energy. And for my, the feminine is, is that is just to say, wait a minute, what's sweet about this? What's good? Ooh, how can I just take her up in this moment right now and stop and smell the roses? It gets me to know that self-pleasuring is an act of true health. It's an orgasmic experience, orgasmic meaning full of life. And when you start to get your body accustomed to and in the habit of experiencing an expression of being full of life, that translates to everything. It becomes your meter and ruler of understanding. Instead of what you see, the chaos in the world, you now shed the world, shed the bullshit, shed the politics, the government, the fake news, the real news, shed all of that. And then you start to know that you have the authority to bring your orgasmic life force, pranayama breath into everything. And that is goddess energy. That is the feminine uh, power, that, that masculine energy of mine, it gets me there. And the feminine energy of mine says, now that you're here, experience it, feel mm. it, be it. Yes, yes. I love that, that definition of orgasmic as simply full of life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Audre Lorde's article, Uses of the Erotic, the Erotic as Power, is one of really kind of my most sacred texts when it comes to understanding sensuality and femininity as referring to the erotic as our fully feeling self. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that definition of orgasmic and bringing that orgasmic energy into everything that we do is simply this fullness of life, this life energy. It's so beautiful. Absolutely. And one of the things that I talked about in my class when I, I loved opening up with the story, uh, Shakti and Shiva in Shavasana, because Shakti is, when you think of Kundalini and the snake rising, the serpent energy 
rising, which is really, I translate to this energy of knowing thyself, this energy of wellness, this energy of truth rising within us, activating these energy chakras, that feminine energy dwells in the root. And as she begins to travel up that energy wheel, those that kundalini begins to rise, she rises to meet Shiva, which is the energy in the third eye and said to be the masculine energy. And there in our third eye, Shakti dances up through our bodies, bringing our energy, that Kundalini rising up to our third eye where we have vision, where Shiva and Shakti meet and make love in this union. And when they make love in this union, the energy explodes orgasmic from our crown chakra. And that's the energy that we radiate into the universe that draws and attracts unto itself. I love that story. It's mm. just so beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> and, you know, you are a person that I consider very attractive, not just because of your radiant beauty, but the way that you have an energy and just a, um, like, you're just magnetic. You know, you just have this magnetic femininity. And as we're, as we're talking, I have Kim's website open and it's flashing all of these images of her and I'm just like God Jesus so <laughs> and something I really really appreciate about you and I love closing our talks in this way because it's a really fun little dessert or what do you call that like an aperitif no I think aperitif is to start the meal anyway like a, a little sweet thing to end on mm -hmm. is style and beauty. And you have a really vibrant, expressive, like I love knowing that you have Leo in your chart because I really see that Leo expressing itself through you. I wonder if you could share anything, any pieces of wisdom, pearls of wisdom around expressing this magnetic energy that you just described. And it's, it's this funny paradox because you're the naked yoga goddess and yet you have this beautiful, expressive way of, of sharing yourself through your style and how you bring your magnetic, orgasmic, feminine essence into how you dress. Absolutely. I love it. I'm actually going to start doing teacher training. That's a you know little nugget in January. And Are you I'm doing excited. teacher training, sorry to interrupt. Are you doing teacher training specifically for a naked yoga goddess? Yeah. So if you're already 200 hour, if you already have a 200 hour vinyasa certification, or I'm working with studios who are providing 200 hours and part of the component could be bringing sacredness to nakedness that they offer to their trainees as an alternative uh, to a yoga experience. So oh, this is great. Hey, yeah. uh, my first studio I'm working with Afro Yoga. Um, it's in January and will be in, I believe, Arizona. Um, oh, congratulations. So I'm so excited. Yes, yes, That's yes. such great news. So yes, it's happening, it's happening and it's rippling and this time is so perfectly right. So I will say that part of one of the things that I do in the experience is, so when people come, when women come, they're like, oh, they're so nervous, they're so nervous. And then they take their clothes off, everything, then they're practicing. After 10 minutes, they forget because it's real yoga. I've been you know, teaching yoga for many years. And then at the end of the class, I can't get them to put the clothes back on. <laughs> so I'm like, what's going on? But I always have this affirmation that whatever you now you see the sacredness that the best part of you is this underneath. And that's everyone. That's such a metaphor, an intentional metaphor that even when people see that we're angry or we're go-getters, there's something underneath that. There is uh, so much more to the underneath than what we see. And so my thing is 
know that that underneath is the most beautiful part of you and whatever you put on, it should be something that adorns this best part of you, that adorns this temple, this true temple that when we go in within ourselves, it is where we find the divine. So this is truly a temple and how you dress and how's that temple should be of the finest quality and, and make you feel good when you look in the mirror, make you feel good when you're out in the world, make you feel good when you're with your friends and family and loved ones. And so that's how I think of myself. And um, I grew up, I got to have a shout out, you know, to my mom who was a, a, like dressing, like everyone knew my mother for the, her style and the way she dressed and her hats and suits and dresses for church, <laughs> gorgeous. And I grew up seeing the, the beauty in the African-American community when it came to uh, bold colors and, you know, things that hugged your curves in just the right way. So although you weren't being super revealing, people still knew that there was some sex appeal underneath the, those clothing. And I grew up seeing that over and over again. Um, Boomerang was one of my favorite movies. And growing up seeing you know, Robin Givens and how she strutted, you know, because she had on that power suit. It resonated. It, it left an impression. It, it's how um, not only what I wanted to look like, but how I wanted to feel in my clothing. So when I feel powerful and invulnerable in my naked body, I definitely don't want to invalidate or belittle that in any way, shape or form. So you're not gonna get me in a bunch of elastics. I'm, you probably won't get me in anything that's going to cut off my circulation mm -hmm. or can't eat a meal and still feel comfortable. You know, like I, you probably won't find me in those kinds of things. It, it will be something that I feel good and it, enhances you know enhances my beauty and, and the the quality of the naked body that it is covering and as a, a black woman you know we don't see like i said you google yoga poses and i'm not coming up you know no matter how in shape i am what i represent what i'm not coming up and that's the facts of the matter if you want to see me and represent me like you have to listen to people who understand what I'm doing and believe in me. It is not just privilege to see a woman who's 46, who enjoys health and wellness, enjoys life, enjoys her children, enjoys life and sensuality and sexuality and self-pleasuring and affirmations. Like you don't see us saying, hey, look at me. And so I know people, you know, sometimes will look at my page and, and say, oh, wow, she's naked. She just wants to be seen. Yeah, you're right. You are absolutely right. I want to be seen. <laughs> I want to be seen and I want to be heard and I want to be listened to. I want to be cherished and I want to be included. And anyone and everyone who looks like me or doesn't, I want them to. So yeah, I just want to be seen. Here's my tits. Here's my ass. Woo! Wow, that is such a powerful way to close. <laughs> like, you know, you know, like, it, and and I think of it almost as the yoga of visibility. Is that when mm -hmm. there's this impulse to shut down or to hide or messaging to cover up? It's like the the breath comes in the willingness to stay comes in and then the release comes in to say look at me you know? mm -hmm. beautiful oh, perfect oh, Kim, i just adore you so much i am so grateful for um your presence on the podcast today and congratulations on the teacher training i am tickled about that and so excited for you and so to find out more about Kim's amazing classes, her teacher trainings, her coaching, 
and to just see a gorgeous portfolio of photos of this goddess, you can check out the nakedyogagoddess.com. You can also check out her Instagram, Naked Yoga Goddess. And she also has a podcast called The Pleasured Mom. Giving life doesn't mean life has to end. If you want more of Kim in your life and in your ears. So thank you so, so much for being here today, Kim. I love you. I love you. Thank you. So much fun. For coaching classes and community in sensual living, head over to schoolofsensualliving.com. There you'll find a free video workshop in how to overcome anxiety and feel confident in almost any situation through the skill and power of your body language. Go to schoolofsensualliving.com confidence to start your journey today.